Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. In Genesis chapter 5, verses 24, the Bible says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Somebody shout, Amen. The Bible says, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Hallelujah. This scripture is one of the sweetest experiences of the deepest fellowship I have ever read in human history. Bible says Enoch walked with God and was no more. The Amplified Bible says and Enoch walked in habitual fellowship. It was not a one day evening of prayer. But it was a habitual fellowship. And so God gives us a picture of a man who has deliberated himself to habitually connect to the Spirit of God. And by result of that habit, the continuous life of consecration, the Bible says he was not, for God took him. The Amplified says, home with him. Underline home with him. Somebody say amen. Now, if you read the Hebrew language, from which we translate this to English, the word therefore walked with God denotes the most confident intercourse, the closest communion with a personal God. And so this Genesis 5.24 defines a man who walked with God in a very close communion with the Spirit, in very confidential intercourse with the Spirit, that he became so one, he became so joined, he became so attached, he became so connected with God. And like I said, it's not just that one prayer of a conference. It's a continuous life of a man relating with God in a very deep dimension of communion. And because of that, the Bible says he was not. And the Hebrew word, he was not, is from a primitive root, meaning to be nothing. To be nothing. He was habitually in communion with God until he did not exist. Are you following me? So here he denotes an idea of being so one with God and that it is possible to be so one with God that you stop to exist. That you become nothing. So Enoch was in a confidential intercourse uh, close communion with God until he stopped existing until he was nothing and the Bible says for God took him the Hebrew word for took is laukash or laukach which means to lay hold of which means to seize which means to receive which means to acquire which means to buy, which means to bring, but all of these in a picture of a man marrying a woman. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So it means that when Enoch walked in close communion with God, he walked with God for so long that he ceased to exist because he became one like a woman marries a man and the two become one 
In Ephesians he says, for this reason shall a man leave his own house and go be joined with his wife and the two shall become one place. He did not say one spirit. He says, and the two shall become one flesh. But this, the Bible says, he spoke concerning Christ and the church. So here, when man and woman become one, the Bible says they become one flesh. Whatever I do to my body, I do to the body of my wife. And whatever, how my wife does to her body, does to my body. You understand what I'm saying? That's the oneness. They become one flesh. But it's one thing to be one flesh, and it's another to be one spirit. Who understands what I'm saying? Now, Enoch walked with God. And the Bible says, and that communion, why the Bible says he ceased to exist? It is because he was given another title. He was given another identity of oneness with the God that he communed with. Like a woman takes on the name of her husband and she ceases to be of her own. For the head of every woman is man and the head of every man is Christ. So it was in this experience of this man that the Lord snatched him. The Lord seized him. The Lord took a hold of him and Enoch did not see death because he snatched him like a man would snatch a wife to be with. That was deep love. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. That was deep love. He was acquired like a man would acquire a wife. So when people say, oh, Enoch never died, he never saw death, that's why. Because he became one with whom that cannot die. He was consumed and taken by one who could not die. Somebody shout hallelujah. And because he was taken and acquired or seized or received by one who could not die, eventually... Mortality was swallowed by immortality. Terrestrial was exchanged with celestial. The form of his body was consumed. But there was no provision for him to die. God literally took him and carried him because he was one with God. And God says, look, a man can connect with me to that level that he will never see death. He said, a man can be so one with me that I can take him, that I can receive, I can acquire them, I can seize them, I can take hold of them. And they never see death. An experience of a man who walked with God. And if you're a reader of the Bible, Enoch is the seventh man in the lineage of Adam. Are you hearing me? From the line of Seth. Like Lamech was the seventh from the lineage of Cain, which killed Abel. And how God in those seven generations, from Cain, which is banished from the presence of God, but he that touches him, God shall avenge seven times. Now, do you understand why he avenges Lamech's life 70? Now that in every generation of Cain, the man which killed, God increased the mercy of a household. Because it says, he that kills Lamech, I will avenge 70 fold. Yet it says, he that kills Cain, I shall avenge 7 fold. So from 7 to 70, God made cycles of 10 for 7 generations. It means in every generation, God extended grace to the lineage that had killed ten times more where would they be now if his mercies were coming to them by that multitude and if he can show mercy to the household of Cain how much more the household of Seth and no wonder there we see the man that walks with God and the Bible says and that man God literally married him and owned him for him and took him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And so God starts to bring out that conversation of men which become one with him and marriages take place in 
Hosea chapter 2 verses 19, if you read the Amplified Bible, he says, I will betroth you to me forever. He said, I will marry you. Forever, he said. And he says, and yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice and in steadfast love and in mercy. I will even betroth you to me in stability and in faithfulness and you shall know and recognize and be acquainted with and appreciate and give heed to and cherish the Lord. Why? Because his plan for you is to be betrothed to him, to get married to him, to get to a communion with him where you cease to exist, where you become nothing. Somebody shout amen. And when you become nothing, it takes you. In other words, you take his name. That's why the Bible says, I have son named you. Do you know why he has son named you? Because he's built a relationship with you that intends to have a marriage relationship, a oneness with him, for you to cease to exist by son name. You have the son name of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians, when we get into the New Testament, what Enoch's experience was becomes a finished work in the New Testament for the church. And he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2, he says, for I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Now he's telling the church that what Enoch did in seeking personal communion with God, oneness with God, until God married him and he was no more, he ceased to be. He says, now, when you become born again, you begin from where Enoch ceased. Enoch walked in habitual fellowship with God until God married him and they became one. You begin a life of salvation married to God. You are espoused to God. That means it is wrong doctrine to tell people to commune with God until they are no more. Because when we talk about that, many people misunderstand how Enoch walked with God, how he was one with God. And I want to talk about your oneness with God. Because when you understand that, you will see how much liberty you have and how much is available for you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. So Enoch exercised the habitual close communion with God. And as he continued to exercise a closeness with God, the Bible says he was not, he ceased to be, he stopped existing. Why? For God took him, for God married him, he snatched him like a man snatches a wife to be one with. That's Enoch. And God says, through Paul, I have espoused you. To one husband. I am jealous over you, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. In other words, Christ is the husband of the church. And what Enoch applied himself over the earth to get into, the church has received by faith. Somebody say by faith. Now, when Paul saw that, he writes in Hebrews 11 verses 5. Give me the Amplified of that. He says, because of faith. Oh, so now we actually realize that for Enoch to walk in habitual fellowship with God, there was something that preceded that thing. We see that Enoch did not create a close communion with God simply by being emotional. Enoch walked by the spirit of faith before the application of the habitual or continual communion with God. And now we see by the spirit that the heart of that man to be espoused to God is perfected in his heart of faith. And the Bible says, and because of faith, Enoch was caught up and transferred to heaven as one taking his wife. That's why the Bible says it took him home. Who understands what I'm saying? 
he took him home. And so the Bible says, because of faith, Enoch was caught up and transferred to heaven so that he did not have a glimpse of death. And he says, and he was not found because God had translated him. This was a love affair. The translation was a love experience. Somebody shout, Amen. For even before the Bible says he was taken to heaven, he received testimony, still on record, that he had pleased God and been satisfactory to God. He had the record, even before he was taken, that he had pleased God and he had been satisfactory to God. So he said, okay, so how did he please God? How did he satisfy God? And the next verse says, but without faith, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. It means this man, as he was in the habitual communion, even before he makes up his mind to enter a habitual communion, he first believed God. He believed God. And when he believed God and he satisfied and pleased God because of his faith, his prayer is not what moved God. His prayer was the result of a pleased God. Enoch's prayer did not move God. It's not the habitualness of this communion that caused God to take him but rather it was the faith he had in God that energized the habitualness and that habitualness espoused him to God who has understood what I said so that prayer is not which moves God that prayer is which God moves God has never met man to seek him without spiritual aid. Go back to the space of the filling of the tongue. And the Bible says, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. They did not utter deliberate. No. The Bible says the Spirit gave them utterance for man cannot pray except by the spirit that is why he's called the spirit of grace and supplication that is why some people pray for two minutes and they're tired because they're the ones praying i say that's why you pray and get tired because you're the one praying but when god prays through you oh, 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 oh. when god prays through you he says sometimes we not know what to say like we ought to say he says but the spirit of god help us in our infirmities what are those infirmities the weakness the kind of flesh that gets tired when you pray the kind of mind that does not know how to pray the way it ought to pray the emotional state that sometimes loses reason and revelation and becomes more emotional than the substance of what God wants to deliver in the human spirit. And he says, and likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit itself, he says, maketh intercession for us. He says, with groanings which cannot be uttered. As he intercedes with groanings which cannot be uttered. He gives you utterance. So you can pray. So I'm not talking about prayer as an effort to find God. No, I'm talking about generations that pray because God is with them and is praying through them. That prayer is different. Tell your neighbor that prayer is different. I remember many years ago I encountered this thing and I understood it. Oh, oh my God. I'll be walking and as I'm walking, I find myself, Rabakata, Rabba. I say, yeah, 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 yeah. What am I doing? Huh? Rabakata. And then that was the time I remembered very vividly as I was sleeping. And I woke up like that. And as I woke up, I found my lips saying, Rabakata, Shaka, Talapapa. I say, 
So I started to realize that even in the deepest slumber, the sky inside is giving me utterance. And up to today it happens. In the night, I wake up and my lips are moving. As my brain is reaching on, it finds the spirit for him is busy. You understand? Why? Because it's not me praying. I'm no longer praying in my ability. I'm praying in the ability of one which is exposed by God. Somebody shout amen. So the Bible says, but without faith it is impossible to please and be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God, now he's trying to give the experience of how Enoch came. Because he was talking about Enoch. So he says, whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists. And that he is the rewarder of those who honestly and diligently seek him out. He said he's the rewarder of them that diligently or honestly seek him out. So are we seeking as those to move him? Or are we seeking as those he moves? Come on. Are you praying as one? which wants to move God or are you praying as one which is moved by God and now Paul tells you Enoch before the habitual communion had to make up the spirit of faith spirit of faith spirit of faith one he knew that God exists and two and that he is the rewarder of them which diligently seek him you never seek him in vain. The Bible says he has not called Jacob to seek him in vain. You're not here for nothing. You're not here for nothing. He has not called you to seek him in vain. It's not possible. That's not God. That's not God. And so we see that the heart that is perfect toward God is the heart that is neat in the spirit of faith. Second Chronicles. And it says that the eyes of the Lord look to and fro, seeking to show himself strong on the behalf of the man whose heart is perfect with him. And the Lord revealed to me that there can never be a perfection without faith. Because faith defines the perfect heart. Who understands what I'm saying? Faith defines the perfect word, the perfect heart. Faith defines the perfect heart. You can never be perfect in your own ways and actions. Even your best is still not enough for your righteousness is as filthy rags. But God is saying, look, I'm looking for a perfect heart. And he says, if your heart is perfect with me, I will look for you. Did you already just said? He said, if your heart is perfect with me, I will look for you. Hide in the nook and cranny, I will get there. Get in the village and the valleys, I will find you. Even if you go to the most remotest place where there is no network, internet, roads, nothing. He said, if I find a heart that is perfect with me, he says, the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro. There are people who seek God and there are people who God is seeking. There are people who are looking for God. And there are people who God is looking for. Because the right order was for the husband to find. For he that findeth. That means the perfect heart of a wife is faith. But this Christ speck concerning him and the church him and the church the church had to have enough faith for this marriage to take place for by faith <laughs> praise God we're saved by grace through faith 
with a heart a man believes and confession is made unto salvation. You have to believe. Tell your neighbor, you have to believe. You have to believe. This particular marriage of Christ and the church needed faith in God. He came from heaven for you. You did not go to him. No, he came to you. The Bible says that the law was brought by Moses, was given by Moses. The law was given by Moses. He says the law was given. Moses gave the law. He says, but grace and truth came. There's a difference. With Moses, he gave something. With Christ, he gave himself. He came. Jesus came. Grace and truth came. It came to you. Some of you think, you know, I decided that day. Let me go and pray. <laughs> Brother, you were wired here by the person of the Holy Spirit. This is your husband bringing you here. Because it's the head and you're the body. For the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Nobody is here simply because we invited. There are those who had the invitation and they didn't come. But there was something that couldn't leave you in that bed. There was something that could not leave you on that job. There is even someone here, you tossed and turned. You said, oh my, go, why don't go, why go, oh my, don't go. But you just found yourself putting on your clothes. Are you hearing me? Oh my, go, why don't go. But it kept throwing you. It kept throwing you. Because you had to come and be with your Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody shout amen. Shout amen. You delight in the ways of God. Somebody shout amen. Glory to God. So, I always tell people, Chronicles was one of the most sobering scriptures. I have certain scriptures that sober me, but this one, 16, 9, that thing sobered me. That the eyes of the Lord look to and fro. He's looking. Who? 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 Who should I take? Who should I snatch? Who should I... Uh! Who should I? He's looking. He's looking for the heart of a man which is perfect. He says, I want to show myself strong. I want to show things that you've never seen before. I want to write history with somebody. And he starts to look. I want to change the destinies of nations and it starts to look. I want to shape the political systems of nations and it starts to look. I want to change the social structures of nations and it starts to look. I want to set continents in my name and it starts to look. And it says, and they are looking for the man whose heart is perfect with him. And how can the man be perfected if he has not pleased God and God is not satisfactory with him. And Paul tells you, ah, now here is the satisfaction. Without faith, it is impossible to please and be satisfactory for him. Firstly, believe God. He says, believe me. You know, that's when you come in my presence, come with a certain expectation that I'm God and I'm going to deal with you and that I'm going to reward you. How far? Depending on how you're ready to believe. The deeper you're ready to believe, the more perfect your heart is. And he says, I will show myself strong on the heart that has been perfected in faith. Because if a man is not believed, there are many things you can do in unbelief. Why are you relying on that man? Because you don't believe for God to provide for you. Why are you begging? Because you don't think a raven can feed you. Why would a pastor manipulate his flock? Because he does not believe that God will provide what he needs. For whatsoever is not done in faith is seen. That is why we move in sin. 
only even seen some. Because we have not understood the perfect heart of faith. But that's the heart God constructed in Enoch. And because Enoch believed God, it was the act of faith toward God that gave him a prayer life. It was not problems in the home. It was not a funny man. It was not a lack of job. It was not poverty in the family. No. It was faith toward God that gave a certain man a habit of prayer. And that habit of prayer espoused him to God. And God tells the church, you're not going to begin from that. You're going to begin from an espousing with me. But when you get into the life of prayer, you're not in that habit for me to marry you. You're in that habit for us to give birth. <laughs> who has understood what I just said you are not preparing a habitual life so I can be one with you I'm already one with you no this time your life of prayer which by the way because of your faith in me when you confess the Lord Jesus you allowed me to push you into a prayer life of bringing forth children, of bringing forth fruit, of bearing something out of your womb, of producing something. I am the vine. He says, and ye are the branches. He says, without me, you can do nothing. Oh, and with me? And with me? Ah, uh -uh. on the tree, where are the fruits? Are they down on the shoot? Are they in the leaves? Or they are on the vine, they are on the branches. You know, as he's saying, Enoch did his part. He did what a man without the new life could ever do in the highest level of communion. But he's not the standard of the new birth. Because the regenerated nature is not to that habit because of faith, to that habit, to the end to be espoused. No. When it believes Christ, it's espoused. And because it is espoused, it's betrothed, it's married to Christ, it's Christ and his bride, right? The church. It means the next place of communion is resolved. It's answered. Luke 8, 11 says, the parable is that the seed is the word of God. Now, when you check the Greek word there for seed, he calls it spermatos, sperm. He says, now, the spermatos, the seed, is the word of God. So when he gives the word to this praying fellow, it's because he knows the church has power for conception. And so the life of prayer is a life of conception carrying womb to bring forth. It's not for a marriage. Aye. Obangambani. This one is not for marriage. No. This one is to bring forth. That is why when you come in the presence of God to pray, you're coming either for an impregnation or to bring forth. And he says, and he is not the God who allows a woman to become pregnant and she does not bring forth. That is not God. He is not the God. He says, shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth? Said the Lord, shall I cause to bring forth and suck the womb? Uh -uh. He says, when I put that seed, when I put that word in you, it must get to the end and give birth. So the prayer of a new creation is not so to get into marriage. No. It's to conceive seed. To bear ministry. To conceive seed. To bear business. 
to conceive seed to bear relationships to conceive seed to bear some sort of thing tonight you're bringing forth something this is the day of redemption as they which have been waiting <laughs> I say this is the hour of redemption as they which have been waiting on the Lord somebody has just conceived but there is someone who is on the ninth month ninth month they are just here there are some on the third, first try, semester, second try, semester but there are some who are just And we've all come. We've all come. Tell your neighbor we've all come. <laughs> On every prayer, there's a conception. On every prayer, there's a bath. On every prayer, there's a miracle. On every prayer, there's a life. On every prayer, there's a solution. On every prayer, there's an answer. And he says, and even when that is, I will give you grace to conceive. I'll give you the word to conceive. And I'll make sure I'll maintain your pregnancy to its end. When the waters break and that child comes out. Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him home the church is walking with God at home and they are producing fruits that's the New Testament <laughs> who has understood what I just said <laughs> tell your neighbor whatever is inside you it's going to come out Tell your neighbor whatsoever is inside you is going to come out. Listen, you can only get tired of praying if you're the one praying. But if you're not the one praying, if you're not the one which impregnated yourself, how can you frustrate the process? And by faith now, May God give you utterance. May God give you power to pray. May you pray like you've never prayed before. And by the time you leave this ground, make sure by the time you leave this ground, you've got something. Faith pleases God. His eyes are looking. His eyes are looking. His eyes are looking. I said his eyes are looking for perfect faith. Believe God, you will pray. He said, have I not said that you will believe and that you will see the glory of God? Your believing precedes your vision. I said your faith precedes vision. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Pray like a believer. I said pray like a believer. Pray like one which came to give birth to something. You did not leave your home, your office, your workplace for nothing. Or in that was or Kuzara or your Chizara. Come on, open your voice and pray. Pray like a woman in pants. Listen, word, Lord, preserve 
for our love in this world came to work through sacrifice the faithful world so high and said word never true changing me and changing me you are a believer we have come we go and hold on the earth and world in front Holy Word, long preserved for our Lord. In His Word, every sound we go on heart. Oh, let the ancient words be found. Ancient words have We have come with open hearts on every ancient world's deeper. Words of life, words of hope, they give us strength and help us call. In this world where we roam, Ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words have a truth. Changing me, changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words keep us. Oh, ancient words. Changing me and changing you. If you have not given birth yet, if you have not brought certain fruit yet, it is because you have not prayed in faith yet. It is because you have not been carried by the Spirit in prayer. May the Spirit of prayer come over you. May He carry you the Spirit of grace and supplication. May He give you utterance. Until you bat something. Until you bat something. Until you're sure that something came out of you. Until you conceive something and you're sure that conception has taken place. Depending on where you are. Some are conceiving, some are growing, some are passing. And it's up to your faith and the decision you make tonight. Because God is able to do just what He said He would do. He's got a fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. 
For your children, for your family, for your ministry, for what you see, for your career, for your life, for what you call to do, you were called to do. No spill back, no misparages. Rababa katala pa yere lebo. You have to give back to life. 
Ministry is a bust out of prayer. When destiny is a bust out of prayer, miracles are bust out of prayer. Greatness is passed out of prayer. Revelation is passed out of prayer. Answers are passed out of prayer. But a prayer that is guarded by the Spirit, that is under guarded by the Holy Ghost, that is flowing by the Spirit of God, the grace of God on it, the operation of power on it. The Spirit gives you utterance. To pray for things you don't have what for. Pray like a woman on mission. Pray like a man on mission. Pray like you came into the world to do something. Pray like you came in the world to give something the world has never seen. To create something generations have never seen. To bring back something that creation has never seen. Pray like you have an answer for your generation. Pray like you are made to bring a solution, to bring an answer, to write history, to establish something the world has never seen. Makarama, may you conceive it. May you give back to it. You revive our nation, you revive Africa, you revive the world through our wounds, through our wounds. Ra 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 
I will praise him, he is exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise his name. the 
Believe God that He is the rewarder of them that diligently, honestly seek after Him. Oh, Yaraba Baba Baba. You're going with something. You're living with something. Yaraba Baba Baba Katalapa. Believe God. 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 Tell him I believe you God. Believe God for miracles. Believe it for sight. Believe it for wonder. Believe it for a move. Believe it for revival. Believe it for information. The papa can't believe God. God is looking for somebody who believes. Hey, Thank you, Lord. 
believe God that is defining you today. Believe that this is your season. Believe this year. This year. This year. Your redemption is come. The redemption of things is come. The redemption of life. The redemption of family. The redemption of ministry. Finances. I see a heavenly cloud. I see it. But I see a cloud of heaven itself. Sarababa Katalapa. Arabala. Like a smoke in the atmosphere. I see the angels of God. I see them everywhere. I see them everywhere. I see them. They're here. They're here. God opened somebody's eyes to see the angels here. Open somebody's eyes to see how many angelic beings are on this crowd. I see the angels of God. I see the Lord. I see the Lord. So can I. He's here. He's here. He's revealing himself to you. 
Somebody is having a heavenly experience. An appearance of Jesus. Some are seeing angels right now.
Lord, you know, and recently God has been speaking to you in visions and dreams more than it has happened in your life before. If there are people who have started a season of dreams and visions, and God has been speaking to you in this season more than he has ever before. The Lord tells me for those people there is something he's releasing right now to launch you deeper. There it is. There it is. There it is. Power Holy Ghost! There it is. I see a divine impartation that is going to launch you into deeper responsibilities for this nation, for the continent. Your eyes are going to see the darkest things. in the hidden places. Both the good and bad and with the wisdom of judgment to know what to do. I see you command nations. I see your voice. Create minerals that never existed in grounds. I see God May God launch you deeper. May God launch you deeper. May God launch you deeper. I say, may God launch you deeper. May you see more and more and more. And more so if you sit in the office of a prophet. I hear prophetic flutes playing for men to hear and see. Babolidos. Mm. <laughs> Your eyes are going to open like never before. Your ears are going to see things, hear things. You're going to dream things. Your dream world is opening. The gates of dreams are opening towards you. And many things you're going to see come with responsibility. In fact, as I'm speaking, Somebody's eyes are opening right now. I see God washing your eyes with towel. And your eyes are seeing. It's no longer faith, it's sight. You see. You see. You see. You see. And some of you, the visions you're seeing right now are too scary. Because they don't look like you. They don't look like your age. They don't connect to what you've been through. But I pray God launches you. Deeper. And deeper. And deeper. And deeper. And deeper. And deeper. Father, we thank you. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Come on, clap for Jesus like you bust something. Clap for Jesus like you bust something. And if you're here and you're sick in your body, right now receive your healing. Raise the faith to receive healing for an incurable disease. 
God is healing you now. Receive your healing now. I want to pray for your finances this year. I see a great anointing that is going to bring finances beyond your scope of operation. Receive it. Receive it. I said receive it. I see the anointing that is going to bring money you have never seen even in your relatives and family. Holy Ghost! You're going to see money that even people in your family have never seen. That nobody related with you has ever seen. That even if they bring the tribe together, they've never seen it. And the door that brings that money is opening this year. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a man of praise. So if you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, I want to give you the opportunity to come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Those of you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, can repeat this words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Change my life. Change everything that touches me. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.